Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Today I want to talk to you about open doors. The Word of God has a lot to say about the subject of doors, open doors specifically. And we're not going to get to all of them, but we're going to dig into some of these scriptures so you can have a you know, clear understanding about these open doors. Because as a believer, we need to make sure that we are going through the right doors and that you are, you know, making sure you're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. See, faith is what opens the door to us. And we have to know that these doors that God has for us, we have to make sure that we are, you know, like I said, we're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and we are going through the right doors because, you know, but for every good thing that God has, Satan has a counterfeit. So we have to make sure we test the doors to make sure we're not, you know, being deceived by the devil and going through his doors because the devil has some doors too and they lead to destruction. But praise the Lord above that he has open doors for those of us who are truly born again, who truly have ears to hear what he's speaking to us. And like I said, there's many doors. And right now, we're going to start with uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. It says, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Well, think about it. The same thing that Paul was you know, writing in his letter to the church at Corinth about a great and effective door being opened to him. No, she says there are many adversaries. Well, think about this. When God opens those great and effective doors for you to prosper, to, you know, also, you know, to, um, uh, if you're a minister, to go out and be able to, um, uh, you know, to witness Christ, to teach and preach his word without any hindrance. Well, there's going to be those adversaries. Think about it. So he said, yes, there is a great and effective door that's been opened to you. God opens those doors of, of favor from ministry or in other areas, but there are going to be adversaries. There means there are going to be those that the devil himself will send to try to close those doors, to try to, you know, cause all kinds of friction and all kinds of chaos going on. But when you're truly planted in the soil of God's kingdom and you are not giving in to intimidation or discouragement or all these things, guess what? Those doors will be open. doesn't matter if they're, yes, they're going to be adversaries, you know, who are going to come against you and try to talk you out of going through those doors that God has opened for you. But don't listen to the voice of the enemy or the voice of those he uses. No, you go through those open doors. Yes, know that it goes with the territory that there's going to be adversaries, but it doesn't matter because when God's on your side, who could ever dare be against you? So we have to go. And so like I said, faith opens the door. And there's so many uh, understanding what these doors are. There's door, the door of the future, the doors to ministry, doors to revelation, Doors to opportunities, doors to greater intimacy with God, doors to blessings and benefits, doors to divine appointments, not only for us, but also for others. See, we have to understand as we press in to these doors, see, we have to press in to the doors that God opens for us. And like I said, use discernment. In 1 Corinthians, it says one of the gifts of the Spirit is discerning of spirits. It means we have to make sure we're discerning that the doors that are being opened to us are God's doors. And you'll know it by the Spirit. So don't let the devil deceive you. Yes, make sure, like I said, you're going through the right door. But also pray for open doors. Pray, to Lord God, open up doors you know, for me to be able to witness to somebody. Open up doors for a certain opportunity. Whatever it is, God will open the door. But you need to be available. You need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 14.27, the Word of God says, now, when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Now he says, the open the door of faith. See, there's a door of faith, and that's the one we're to go through as believers, and God will open that door. So don't be deceived by the enemy because the enemy has a door, a door open too, and it's called the door of fear. Don't let fear, intimidation, you know, cause you to miss out on what God wants to do. no. God has opened up the door of faith to you, a great and effective door. The adversary, adversary, the devil, will come and those he uses, yes, to try to, like I said, to discourage you, to talk you out of going through the doors that God opens. But don't listen. No, you listen to God. It says he opened the door of faith. Well, think about it. We are in the new covenant and we have so much, many better promises that you can't even imagine. So just think about when you go through those doors, all the things that God is going to just pour out upon you. Like I said, doors of blessing, doors of you know benefits, doors to divine appointments, all that you could ever imagine. But you're going to have to open those doors and you're going to have to go through them. 
Don't close the door. See, a lot of people do that. You know, God opens doors. He He gives those opportunities and puts it in your path. But then people just, you know, have a blind eye to it or they shut it because they're they're scared because they're thinking they're going through the wrong door. Well, if you are born again and you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, then you don't have to be afraid. God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So go through the open doors of faith that God has opened to you because that's what he wants for you as, as a part of his kingdom. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 12 through 14 says, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the Lord. I had no rest in my spirit because I did not find Titus, my brother. But taking my leave of them, I departed from Macedonia. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Yes, thanks be to God. He leads us in triumph. How does he do that? Through the open doors that he has for us. Notice he says that, that a door was opened to him by the Lord. Well, God will open those doors for you. Are you his child? Are you blood-bought and born again of the Holy Spirit, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, then you have, you know, a new DNA. You have the very blood of Jesus coursing through your veins. You are a new creature in Christ. And God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you healed in your body, healed in your emotions. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be victorious. And he's opened these doors for you. If you're a minister and thinking, oh, well, you know what? We all go through this. Lord, you know what? I just seem like I'm not getting through to anybody. I just, you know, no. As pray, Lord God, open doors of opportunities for me to be a witness, to be able to teach you. Open doors for me, you know, or maybe you're somebody who is, you know, is in business or whatever it is. Open up doors of opportunity for business partners or, or whatever it is that you need of. As believers, yes, we can call upon God. He'll listen and he'll answer us. He said he, he would answer us and show us great and mighty things we don't even know. Not only the things you're asking for, but even bigger things because he's a great big God and he has these doors and we need to go through them and not just, you know, sit back and think he's, you know, he's just going to open it. Yeah, he's opening these doors, but we have to be put into position. It means we have to be, you know, ready and available when those doors are open and go through them and not just think that they're going to open to us just because, you know, we said a sinner's prayer 50 years ago. No, we have to make sure that we are pressing in. Press in to the open doors that God has opened to you. In Matthew 7, 7 and 8 says, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. He said it will be open, but you have to knock. And when you knock, guess what? God will open the doors. He will open them and he will open doors as we're going to see that no man can shut. Think about it. So don't worry about what the devil is trying to, you know, whisper in your ear or what, you know, your people, your family, your friends or whatever are telling you, oh, no, that's just impossible. God, you know, no, God's not going to do it. Well, God is the God of the impossible. What is impossible in the world is possible with God. All things are possible with God. But you have to believe. You have to knock on the door and he will open it. That's the key. Knock and he will open. Seek and you will find. That's the thing. And ask and it will be given to you. But it's all done in faith. And the doors that are going to be open to you are going to be doors of faith, doors of opportunity, doors of blessing, the doors of your future, of revelation, whatever it is. God's saying, you know what? Seek, ask and knock and it will be open. In Revelation 3, 7 and 8, and then verse 20 says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Notice he says, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. That means, you know what, go through it, knock on it, and open it and go through it. Don't just, you know, think, oh, what am I supposed to do, stand still? No, go through it. No man, no devil can shut it unless you allow them to by not going through it. He says, he 
is the one who opens the door and it won't and no one can shut it and shuts doors that no one can open. It means he'll he'll open the right doors and he'll also shut the wrong doors. Think about it. And then verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And see, this is a lot of people think this is written to sinners. No, this is written. This is a letter, one of the letters to the church. He says, I stand at the door and knock and everyone hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in. Our, our thing is we have to. We have to knock and we have to come into his presence. If you don't knock, if you don't seek him, then guess what? The door won't be opened. But he says, if you do, he will hear you and he will open the door and he will come and have fellowship with you. That true communion with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Think about it. And then I go right into chapter four, verse one and two of Revelation. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet saying with me, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So this is talking about once, you know, the church is uh, raptured. Because rapture is pre-tribulation. And then in the vision that John saw, he said there was a door standing open in heaven. Well, guess what? There's an open door in heaven. Once we are glorified and raptured and we're out of here, guess what? Then, of course, you know, the tribulation will unfold here on the earth. The Antichrist will rise to power. But that's not for you as a member of the body of Christ. You have the open door to come in and to be one with Christ, one with him. He is the head and we are his body. And if you want to partake of all that he has for you, then guess what? You need to go through that. That's one of the first doors you go through is the door of the relationship with him. And to not be lukewarm, but to be hot, to be a son of obedience, one who's going to hear, come up here, and you're going to go through those doors of eternity. So they're the door of eternity. And that's the main one that you need to go through. But you won't if you never knock, if you never come into agreement with his word. Think about it. In John 10, 7 and 9, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. See, he's the open door. He is the door, the door of the sheep. We have to hear his voice. We have to go through those doors and we have to commune with him. We have to come into alignment with him as a part of his body. So like I said, there's these doors that are open for us. The door unto salvation. The first one, the door into the future, the doors of ministry, the doors of opportunities, revelation, divine appointments. Think about it. There's so many and we need to pray. We need to see God press into the doors. Don't just sit back and have this, you know, apathetic you know, at ease, attitude, comfort zone. No, press into the doors that God has opened to you and you will go and you will have a victorious life. And Psalm 78, 23 through 25 says, yet he had commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He had rained down manna on them to eat and given them of the bread of heaven. And men ate angels food and he sent them food to the full. Well, think about this. Those in the wilderness, even under the old covenant, he opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna. He gave them so much food that they, they were filled to the full. Well, think about how much more we have in the new covenant. We can be filled even greater than that if we would just press in to God, press into the doors he has opened and go through them. And not just those, but all the doors. Remember, there's a great and effective door. Yes, there's adversaries, but bless God, we have authority in Jesus name to take authority against those demons, against the devil, and command him to get, get out of our business. Because we're going through these open doors. We're going to hear the prophetic voice of the Holy Spirit. We're going to hear the very, you know, call up of the church, of his body. And we're going to go through those open doors of eternity. But we have to, you know, do it step by step. Like I said, there's many doors. God has opened them for you. But you have to be put in position to make sure that you hear, you know, what he's saying to us. And then in Colossians 4, 2 through 6 says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word 
to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I make, make, may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So he says that, that you would open a door for the word. Again, this is for, and we need to press into this and say, Lord, open a door for me for the word. There's a lot of people out there who just, who have hard hearts that just, you know, are hard to, to reach. Well, ask the Lord, press in and pray for an open door that the wicked speak the word and that they would have ears to hear, that they that the Holy Spirit would move upon their hearts. So there's so much that we can really, you know, get into deeper levels of what these open doors. So get into the presence of God and start seeking him out and say, Lord God, open these doors of opportunities, these doors of favor, these doors of blessing, these doors of appointments, not only for me, but for those, you know, for others too, because there's a lot of people, we need to come into agreement with what the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church. And when you do, guess what? You will move into greater levels and in intimacy with him, greater levels in faith, faith overdrive. So I implore you to take this seriously and start examining and make sure that, like I said, test them because the devil's out there, you know, trying to deceive like he always does. But make sure you're testing to make sure you're going through the right doors. And when you do, guess what? You will come out victorious because God has open doors for you. He is the open door. So you need to ask, to seek, to knock, and to go through the doors and to come out victorious in every area of your life. Amen. And thank you for watching today.